Hey guys, welcome back. Oh, it's so cold. It's like negative five right now. We're about to go to the start of the Iditarod. I'm so excited because this year is the first time that we're gonna see both the beginning and the end of the Iditarod. Right now I'm taking the dogs out real quick. I wish I could take Leia because I think she would have fun seeing all her little cousins taking off. Because she's, I, if she didn't have hip issues, she would love to be a sled dog. My but anyway, that's not the point of this video. Um, yeah, we're gonna go out there. It's supposed to warm up to maybe one degree later. Yeah, let's go see the start. All right, we made it to the parking in downtown. Here I am. Whoops. I got a warm drink because you know it's cold outside. And my kids got Hi. iced drinks. What? A problem with that? <laughs> it's in the negatives and oh, it is? true Alaskans. You can tell I'm an implant <laughs> or transplant. <laughs> what? Not implant. Oh, geez. All right, let's What's go. An implant? All right, I'm gonna prep. Put my toe warmers. <laughs> Frozen rivers, thick forest, desolate tundra, and wind swept coastlines. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the ceremonial start by Ditterod 52, the last great race on earth. I'm oh, not sad. <laughs> I am so sad. Wind. I should have put eyeliner on today. Okay, we are now going to haul butt across town by the Alaska Native Medical Center. I like it there better. It's a closer view of the mushers and the dogs. Ooh, it's cold. We're warming up our extremities. Oh no, my glasses are fogging up. <sighs> Sorry, we're out of breath. We just we ran back. Five well, flights of stairs. Yeah, we had to go up the stairs because <sighs> I know the lighting and stuff isn't great right now. But Okay, let's go to the other part before... <sighs> They're still announcing mushers, so we're going to try to beat them and see them on the other side. Okay, we made it. We're more relaxed now. We've warmed up. My last clip was a little chaotic, but we just got here to the Alaska Native Medical Center. I personally think this is the best place to view. There's different spots along the trail where people gather and watch the mushers go by, but this doesn't seem to be very, like, well-known. Uh, well, now I said it, so... so. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not super... 
uh, we're not, I'm not like one of those big time YouTubers. But anyway, uh, so we're gonna go and get cold again. So this actually isn't the uh, official start. The official start is tomorrow in Willow, but this is a ceremonial start in Anchorage. Oh, it's icy, I better focus. So the ceremonial start downtown was really windy. Here it's not, I don't feel any wind and the sun's pretty warm and hot. The sun's pretty hot. So I like it here better. Ooh, look at this lighting. I'm not crying like I was downtown. Come out, oh, there's a kid right there. We're heading out. We've seen the start. Well, actually, the official starts tomorrow in Willow, but the ceremonial start. And we'll see you guys when we head to Nome to see the finish. We made it to Nome. It's one degree, but the sun is shining. It was chaos getting the bag. <laughs> I left her somewhere in there. So, the mushers aren't supposed to arrive maybe tonight or tomorrow morning, but we're gonna go to the visitor center right now and get a map of the schedule of events or the calendar of events because there's a lot going around town right now. <laughs> oh, the air's cold. Um, yeah, but it's sunny, it's really nice. Kalissa's with me. There's the visitor center, and that's the end of the Iditarod. Right there, we're still doing the arch. Ooh, cold. That's where we're gonna end. So we're gonna get the calendar events here. Okay. Winter problems with glasses. <laughs> so like they have the standings yeah. of the race up yes. at the visitor center. It's pretty small, but it's cute. Lots of info here. Oh, oh, I almost fell. Watch it. It's slick. <laughs> Did she see us? No. We're heading to the Iditarod headquarters right now at the mini convention center. Woo! Oh, my heart skipped a few beats there. <laughs> but yeah, I forgot about that. They have the headquarters here with uh, Iditarod gear and they're selling snacks and food and stuff. So we're going to go check it out. So this is the mini. Nothing else to say right now. <laughs> so they also have a tracking here, rest stop and I think we're gonna get this through. So we did end up getting that blanket. Cool I did a rod bag. So if you wanna go check that out if you ever come. Bring money. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have lunch at Subway. Brought the kids to have lunch here. I gotta say this is, I think the Subway has the best view. Watch. You can see the bear and see it. Look at the view of the Bering Sea here. You can actually see the mushers go by here in the back. All right, we're heading to the finish line because Dallas CV is about to come. Man, there's a lot of people.
don't kind of go. Hold on, you're done. You got it. Good job. I saw him take off in Anchorage and I said, see you at home. <laughs> Here I am in home, like a stalker. Who's <laughs> kidding? <laughs> told you I was going to see you in home. <laughs> oh, they're, they're barking. <laughs> they're ready. Jeez. We're running. Please don't fall. Please don't fall. Please don't fall. <gasps> it's the bikers are here. <laughs> they made it. They did it. They biked the Iditarod Trail. That's nuts. I know I'm getting emotional. And I don't even know them. I'm gonna go look through here. That was exciting. We just saw the bikers come in. So there's a different like trail race invitational thing where you can do walk it or bike the Iditarod Trail. So these guys are 16 days, five hours, 10 minutes or something like that out, out in this. That's pretty amazing. We have a couple of hours before third place comes in, but I can't feel my face. So I'm gonna go warm up. Okay, we're back out here for mushroom number three. Okay, now I'm on this side. I moved farther down so I can get the musher running through. We're waiting for third place to come in. It is currently negative five, but feels like negative 19. 
<gasps> there they are. <sighs> I'm shaking from excitement and cold. Ooh, there's a siren. You hear it? That siren lets the people know. You hear it? It lets people know that a musher's coming. So you can come out and greet them. Mystery mushers. We're in number oh. 12. We have Philip Forslund from Denmark. Millie's coming in. just like that we're back home we didn't get to see the last few mushers come in i wanted to catch that on film but we had to leave before so the last musher gets gets awarded a red lantern the red lantern symbolizes the perseverance determination for pushing through finishing the race he actually arrived i think the night after we left. So I'm sad we missed it and we didn't get to do the banquet either, but there's always next year. I am not oblivious to the fact that there's controversy around the Iditarod. This is the first year that I've truly like processed everything, did a deep dive into like the history, knowing the mushers, like how these dogs are treated. I was like fully immersed. I've seen the Iditarod before, but for me, it was just like, oh, it's oh, a race. I didn't understand it. This is the first time that I fully, I get it. I get the culture. I get why they do it. The sled dog culture, it dates back for thousands of years. Indigenous people in the area use them for transportation. It was a connection between villages. Alaskans have a lot of history with dog sled culture and with the inventions of airplanes, snow machines, like it was kind of dying out. And so they started this race to keep the dog sled culture alive and also to commemorate the 1925 serum run to Nome when there was a big diphtheria outbreak. Hundreds of people were dying and they did a dog sled relay. They took the vials of the antitoxin needed to help people. And these dogs are heroes. They saved hundreds of lives. So that's the reason they go to Nome. I understand being an outsider and looking at it, it seems like I horrible like you don't get it like these dogs are out in these conditions but 
these are like not your normal dogs. Like these are athletes and I'm not here to like stir up this whole controversy, but I can't make a video and pretend like everything's like, yay, everyone loves this race. <laughs> these are athletes. Like these dogs get treated better than a lot of kids in our in this country. They have vet care, they eat well, they are treated well. And I know with any profession, there could be like bad mushers, just like there could be bad nurses, lawyers, teachers, basketball players. I can't speak for every musher out there. I can only speak from my experience and what I've seen with my own eyes and the people that I've met that have dog sled teams. They love their dogs. Seeing the finish and seeing these mushers and the handlers, all there's so much involvement in this race that I had not realized. It's beautiful to see so many people come together. The amount of people involved in making the Iditarod happen, it's just crazy. I met volunteers from out of state. I met some of the handlers, uh, people volunteering in the dog lots all the veterinarians that offer their services along the trail, all the people in, along the villages that help out. I love seeing that, seeing everyone come together. To see the bond between humans and dogs, it's beautiful. I also went to see the finish for the dogs. I wanted to make sure they were okay. I saw them, they were so happy. There's such a connection with the mushers and their handlers and hearing the handlers when, they, when the team comes in, like say these dogs, names and like welcome them like to me they all look alike but I guess they work <laughs> with them but seeing that connection seeing the dogs so happy and you cannot make them run if they didn't want to like there's a musher that scratched in one of the villages I think it was Golovin the dogs were just like they were fine there so they took their time they didn't really want to keep going <laughs> so he just gave the kids in the village sled dog rides and you know, and us like tracking them, they're like, what's taking him so long? Cause now there's all this technology, you can track the mushers. He later told the story of what happened and he scratched cause the dogs were just like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> Another thing that I've seen people kind of comment about was like the dogs being abandoned or left behind. Yes, some get dropped, but they don't just like get forgotten like there's mm. vets there's people there i saw some of these drop dogs for some of the teams meet up with the teams in gnome i saw them in the dog lot i'm just gonna wrap this up i guess what i'm saying is i encourage you all to learn about it read the connection these mushers have oh my gosh ray again with her tail <laughs> learn about the connection these mushers have jesse royer she's in her 40s this was her 21st i did her odd i can't imagine doing this one time but she's done it 21 times like for my girls to see that that was amazing there's this other oh, i forgot her name maybe i'll put it here she rolled up there like nothing she was so cheerful so much energy she was this young girl she introduced each dog afterwards she had the mic she was talking like nothing and like she had more energy than me and I was amazed by that. Like she was just out there doing a thousand miles with her dogs in extreme conditions and she was just like do do do. <laughs> Ryan Reddington, he took Howard Farley's ashes back to Nome. That's another beautiful story. He was a longtime Nome resident. He had just passed away last month. Uh, so seeing the town come out to see that, see the Farley family there. Aaron Burmeister, he was another musher. He ended up scratching. He initially had the ashes, and when he scratched, he passed them along to Ryan. Ryan is the grandson of, I think they call him the father of the Iditarod because he started the Iditarod. So yeah, there's just so much history, so much connection with the mushers and this race that I didn't realize. Like Jason Mackey, he's Lance Mackey's brother. He also, he ran this race for his brother, Lance, who died from cancer a few years ago, and he was another I did a raw champ. Oh yeah, I also found out that one of the mushers, she's pregnant. I think she was 15 weeks pregnant, I saw. Like, I can't imagine. Like, these are just like badass people. <laughs> like, in the way they just showed up and were just like loving on their dogs, I just, I could never, <laughs> is what I'm getting at.
it's rough. It's a rough race. That's why they call it the last great race. This is the only race your gender does not matter. It, men and women are out there. There isn't like a men's race or a women's race. Like they're out there. This is the first year that four women finished in the top 10. Like they're amazing. I My girls got to see these amazing women finish the Iditarod. Yeah, I'm really glad I went. There's a lot of people involved and I would hope that they would continue to make right decisions to keep the dog safe with every race they learn they tweak rules i don't know if one day maybe they'll turn it back into a relay but again i encourage you learn about the history learn about the alaskan native communities around here but yeah that's just my little two cents <laughs> so yeah thanks for watching i will see you guys next time Oh, my dog's are ready for me to give them the Oh, we won't. Oh, I love you. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you Girl. guys next time. Bye.